Hi. Every spring, my beautiful friend Claudia Glows and I do an SPF Roundup collaboration where we each review a variety of sunscreens, traditionally mineral, sometimes hybrid. This year, Claudia suggested that we explore Korean SPFs, which I thought was a really fun idea. If you are not familiar with Claudia, she has a wonderful holistic channel, lots and lots of skincare, as well as health and wellness. Claudia is a retired physician's assistant, and she likes to say she exchanged her stethoscope for her yoga mat. Claudia's research is always meticulous. I respect her opinions, and I always trust her recommendations completely. Of course, I will link Claudia's channel and her video in the description box below. So after you finish this video, please pay Claudia a visit. I know you will love her as much as I do. And by the way, in two short days, I will be on a plane to Paris to spend a week visiting Claudia. Now, we have been FaceTiming at least once a week for the past several years, and we are very good friends, but we have never actually met in person, so I can't wait to hug her and hang out with her, and I'm pretty sure we'll be doing a video or two together. Korea is well known for their skincare, including making affordable, cosmetically elegant, high-quality sunscreens using some of the more advanced filters that we just don't have available in U.S. manufactured SPFs. And the reason for this is the U.S. considers sun filters an actual drug. And as a drug, it must undergo extensive, lengthy, and very, very expensive testing to become FDA approved, making it prohibitive for companies to even want to try to get new filters approved. Believe it or not, the last time the FDA approved a new sun filter in the United States was 1999. We are definitely a little behind the times in terms of sun filters. I do need to note that a couple of years ago there was a pretty big scandal with some of the Korean SPFs not actually containing the protection that was listed on the label. Now this is not unique to Korea. Various countries have had various issues over time but the Korean scandal was all over YouTube, so I'm pretty sure you've heard about it. The good news is I think sunscreen companies are under more scrutiny, and as such, I think they are being even more diligent about independently testing and verifying their product. So I feel really comfortable about the sunscreens that I am sharing with you today, but as always, I encourage you to do your own research. Anyway, today I'm going to review seven new-to-me Korean SPFs that I have been playing with for the past several weeks. I will also be loosely ranking them on how they work on my 63-year-old very dry skin, and I will also try to include information about what skin types these might be good for. Before we get into the actual reviews, I want to go over a few things that all of these sunscreens have in common so I don't repeat the same thing over and over again. Number one, let's talk about the sun protection rating system. Now, Korea does use the SPF rating system that the rest of the world uses, SPF measures the amount of time we can spend in the sun before we get burned. So the SPF number indicates the protection against UVB burning rays. Now Korea also uses the PA plus system and this measures the protection against the UVA aging rays. Four pluses is the most pluses possible and four pluses indicates a protection factor of 94% against UVA. Three pluses equals 80%, and so on and so on. I also want to note that none of the sunscreens I am sharing with you today are listed as being water resistant. For this reason, these are sunscreens I probably will not be using for rigorous, extended, outdoor summer activities, but I think they can be really, really nice for more everyday wear. I have found all of these sunscreens to work really nicely under makeup, and surprisingly, none of these sunscreens stung my eyes or my skin, which can be an issue with some chemical filter. Coming in at the bottom, my least favorite of the seven sunscreens I'm going to be sharing with you today is the Dr. Jarts Every Sunday Mild Sun Cream. Now I ordered this because I'm a huge fan of some of Dr. Jarts other products. Unfortunately, I found this to be very disappointing. This is an untinted mineral sunscreen SPF 43 PA++++, three pluses. This is alcohol-free, 
but it does have a citrus scent that comes from bergamot essential oil, which is a really surprising ingredient because it can be very irritating for some people, and this is supposed to be ideal for sensitive skin. Primary filters, of course, are zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. It does have a couple of emollients such as glycerin and dimethicone, but no specific skin-loving actives such as antioxidants. I found this to take quite a while to work into the skin. It does leave a faint white cast even after 10 or 15 minutes. Now, the white cast can certainly be covered up with makeup or a tinted moisturizer. My main issue with this was the finish was just way too matte for my preference, and it really did feel drying on my skin. In spite of the fact that it says good for all skin types, it just didn't work on my dry skin. Next up, we have the Make Prem Mild Tone Up Sun Cream, Brighten Your Skin, UV Defense Me, Calming Sun Cream. That is quite a mouthful. This is SPF 50, PA++++. Now I had heard so many great things about Make Prem, but what I didn't realize is they make about eight different sunscreen formulas. So once again, I wound up with a 100% mineral, untinted SPF. This is fragrance-free, alcohol-free, essential oil-free. It does have some lovely hydrators and antioxidants. It also is made with bamboo water, and it has a little bit of calamine in, giving it that slight pink tone. Now, I feel like this one works into the skin a little bit more easily than the Dr. Jarts. It also feels just a little bit lighter and a little bit more moisturizing. After about 10 minutes, this only leaves the faintest pinkish cast which can be covered up very very easily with a tinted moisturizer or makeup like i said fragrance free so i do like this one better than the dr jarts but once again it does lean a little bit on the matte side it is not quite hydrating enough for my very dry skin but if you have more combo or oily skin you might very much enjoy this one i've been hearing so many great things about isentry sunscreen so i actually ordered two one 100% mineral and one chemical. So up next, we have the Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Natural Sun Cream SPF 50 PA++++. And again, this is a 100% mineral untinted SPF using both zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. I really like the ingredient list on this. It has vitamin E, it has hyaluronic acid, it has glycerin, panthenol, niacinamide. I did find this to have a very lightweight texture. It does take a little bit of time to work into the skin, but it felt much more lightweight and much more hydrating than the other two mineral sunscreens I just spoke about. It does leave only the faintest white cast, and it dries down to a really pretty satin finish. Again, I found it to work really well under makeup, as the day wore on, it did start to feel a little bit drying on my skin, but I do think this might be a sunscreen that will work better for me in the summer when my skin is not quite as dry. So those three are the only 100% mineral SPFs I'll be reviewing today. The rest of the sunscreens I'll be talking about are either chemical or hybrid. Up next, we have the Misha Aqua Sun SPF 50 PA++++ four pluses. Now, I was mistaken earlier when I said none of these SPFs were water resistant. The Misha Aqua Sun is listed as being water resistant. This is a 100% chemical SPF. It uses six filters. Two are more traditional and four more advanced. And from what I understand, the more filters, the better, because they all have different types and levels of protection and they can actually enhance each other. This has a really light, silky, gel-like consistency that really sinks into the skin easily. It feels very moisturizing. Unfortunately, denatured alcohol is number three on the list, and it does have multiple fragrance listed. Now, I find the scent to be fairly pleasant, but if you are sensitive to fragrance, you will not like this at all. Like I said, no white cast. It dries down nicely to a really pretty satin skin-like finish. Overall, I enjoyed the way this looked and felt, but due to the high level of denatured alcohol 
and the fragrance, this is probably not going to be something I'm going to be getting that much use out of. Now we're getting to the top three, and I do enjoy all three of these very much. We have the Thank You Farmer Sun Project Water Sun Cream SPF 50 PA+++, three pluses. This is a hybrid SPF, meaning it does contain one mineral filter, which is titanium dioxide, as well as five chemical filters. This does contain many lovely humectants and emollients and the antioxidant Centella Asiatica, which I love. However, it does contain alcohol fairly far down on the list and it does have added fragrance. As far as the application, this is a really light gel-like consistency that goes on beautifully, disappears into the skin, no white cast, feels very hydrating, and dries down to a really pretty satin skin-like finish. I don't love the alcohol, but again, it is fairly far down on the ingredient list. And the fragrance doesn't bother me, but I wanted to make sure to mention it in case you are sensitive to fragrance. Now we're getting to the top two. My personal favorites of all the SPFs I have shared with you today. These are the most moisturizing and the most glowy, and they just work beautifully on my very, very dry skin. Now I cannot rank these two. I really can't choose one over the other. They share a lot of similarities, both in moisturization and in finish. They are both fragrance-free, essential oil-free, and alcohol-free. Starting with the Purito Daily Go-To Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 50 PA++++ four pluses. This is a hybrid SPF. It does contain titanium dioxide as a mineral filter, as well as five advanced chemical filters. Now this has some really nice humectants and hydrators, such as butylene glycol. It also has Centella Asiatica, one of my very favorite antioxidants that we find in many of the Purito products. It has a beautiful, lightweight, gel cream consistency that feels really, really moisturizing. And you can see it is literally disappearing into my skin. Like I said, it feels very moisturizing, very hydrating, fragrance free, absolutely no detectable scent. After about 10 minutes, some of the shine does dissipate, but this is definitely a glowy finish, which I personally very much enjoy. And lastly, we have another Isentry product. Now this is a product that a lot of people are raving about right now, and it is the Isentry Hyaluronic Acid Water Sun Gel SPF 50 PA++++. Now like I said, this is very similar to the Purito, and I really can't choose one over the other. However, Purito is a hybrid, and the Isentry is 100% chemical. It uses five chemical filters, two of which are more traditional and three of which are more advanced. I will say I feel like the Isentry has more humectants and emollients. It does contain ceramides, glycerin, as well as five different forms of hyaluronic acid. This does contain Centella Asiatica, which I love, and it also contains niacinamide. So of the two, I do think that the Isentry is a little bit more hydrating. Now, very similar to the Purito, it just has a very lightweight gel-like texture that sinks into the skin beautifully and it feels beautifully hydrating on my very dry skin. I will say this does leave quite a glow, perhaps just a little bit glowier than the Purito. Now, I really enjoy the moisturization and the glow, but if you have more combo or oily skin, these last two might be a little bit too glowy for you. But if you do have combo or oily skin and you have tried these, please let us know in the comment box. I'm really curious how you feel these work on your combo or oily skin. We are really lucky to live in a time with so many sunscreen options available to us, but it can be overwhelming. And that's one of the reasons I love to test and review SPFs for you. Now, the bottom four you probably won't be seeing on my channel again. They just weren't moisturizing enough for my very dry skin. But if you have more combo or oily skin, you might enjoy those. The top three I very much enjoyed. Time will tell. 
to see if any of these top three make it into sort of my permanent top seven, top 10 sunscreen wardrobe that I tend to rotate through. And please, please share your favorites, your recommendations, Korean or otherwise. I always love hearing from you. And with that, have yourself a fabulous day and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care. Bye. Sun cream. Brighten your skin. You de... Ooh. Ah. I had her now I had her now I had her this does leave quite a glow I think this up 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 next brighten your skin you def oh my god such a such a mouthful